Okay, good morning, AP Physics C, Newton's Second Law, Torque Edition. Now, some of you might be having bad dreams about Newton's Second Law, the old pulley problems, right? And we did these problems using what we call the blob method, um, and we did it with force driving. So let's, let's just first look back at one of those for a second, because that's really the foundation to doing any of these. So let's, you know, let's just say we had a single pulley, Let's say it's massless and frictionless. That was the thing we always used to say, right? And we said, okay, if we hung a uh, 5 kilogram mass over here and a 10 kilogram mass over here, all right? We let it go. Well, obviously, it's going to go this way, and the 10 kilogram mass is going to fall down, right? It's going to accelerate this way. This one's going to accelerate that way. They're going to have the same magnitude of acceleration. This one's going to accelerate up. This one's going to accelerate down, right? Now, there's a couple ways to do this, right? We can draw a force diagram for each object. The five, and some of you like doing it this way. I'm going to draw a force diagram for each object, 5 kilogram and the 10 kilogram. 5 kilogram has the force of tension pulling it up. It has its own force of gravity pulling it down. The 10 kilogram has the same force of tension holding it up and it is accelerating uh, this way so the gravity's got to be bigger that way so this is the force of gravity in the five force of gravity in the ten same magnitude of the force of tension here now for this one force of gravity has got to be smaller than the force of tension because it's accelerating up for this one's accelerating down oops trying to make a different looking arrow here for the acceleration same magnitude acceleration, so that arrow is not drawn that well. We would then we set up Newton's second law for each one of these. We'd say, okay, for this one, I'm going to make up the positive direction. For this one, I'm going to make down the positive direction. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like the accelerations to both be positive. All right. When I set up Newton's second law here, F nat equals m a, or m a equals the sum of the forces. Um, I want the MA to be positive on both. And uh, so here we go. F net equals MA. So we have the force of tension is in positive here. So force of tension is positive in this one. Gravity is negative minus, I'm just going to go ahead and put in 50 newtons here. Gravity is in the negative direction. If up is positive, then gravity must be negative. Equals 5 kilograms times A. For this one, I have uh, downs positive, so it's actually 100, positive 100 newtons minus Ft equals 5 kilograms times A. So Ft in this case, this ends up being the magnitude of the force of tension. I've made it negative over here. I'm leaving it positive over here. So I need to solve one of them for the force of tension and plug into the other one. See, I guess what I'm trying to solve for, I should have, should have said, I'm basically solving for everything. I want to find the acceleration of the system and the tension in the in the rope, all right? So first things first, I'm going to solve one of these for tension and plug it into the other. So I guess I'll do it for this one, Ft equals 5A plus 50. So I, I drop the units at this point, no big deal, 100 minus 5A plus 50, equals, oops, I made a typo there, good thing I got dry erase here, equals 10 kilograms times A, 10A, all right, so maybe some of you caught that while I, when I wrote it, maybe some of you didn't, but anyhow, watch out for the negative sign there, so 100 <laughs> minus 5A minus 50 equals 10A, or 50 equals 15 a, bring that over here. Note that this is basically what you'd get from the blob method. All right, and I'm in the glare zone, but it's not too bad this morning. Um, I tried moving the whiteboard up a little bit, closer to the wall to get away from the light. But anyhow, so I get A equals 50 over 15, which is 3.3 meters per second squared, which is good because it's got to be something less than G, right? This just can't go into free fall. This 10 kilogram block, it can't go into free fall because 
that force is pulling all of the mass along with it. The forces of gravity are competing. Like, if you just looked at the 10 kilogram mass, right? Like, the force on that. You got a force trying to pull it down. Well, that's also pulling this one up. So it can't go into free fall. It cannot go into free fall. It's got to pull this one behind it. You know, once it makes it over the pulley, then yes, the whole thing would go into free fall. 3.3 um, meters per second. The blob method, what we did, was we'd say, okay, the total mass of the system is 15 kilograms. We have 100 newtons trying to pull it, you know, basically what I would call clockwise. We have 50 newtons trying to pull it backwards counterclockwise. So that means F net is 50 equals 15 kilograms times A. A is 3.3 meters per second squared. And blob method is a great way to go to check your work. It's a great way to go for solving multiple choice questions. And you can solve short answer questions. However, here's the problem. This was massless and frictionless, right? Massless and frictionless. In fact, that pulley was never even turning. Because if it's frictionless, this rope would just slide right over top of it, wouldn't it? It would just slide. It's not actually even a pulley. So we've been lying to you this whole time. Uh, if, if it's massless and frictionless, it's not serving as a pulley. It's not rotating. In a real life, that doesn't exist. There's always friction. There's always mass. So, yes, pulleys try to minimize the friction. They try to minimize the mass. For instance, those little plastic pulleys I have in class that you've probably played with, you'll notice that the, they're very thin. The spokes are very small. They have a ball bearing. They're very nice. They spin very freely, very low friction. So how do we deal with it when we have a mass? All right. So... Here we go. I'm actually going to leave those force diagrams, all right, for the two objects. And then I'm going to talk about this. So anytime you turn something, right, there's, there's a roll of blue tape, right? If I want to turn this, let's say I could fix it, I have to apply a torque to it, all right? So a torque in this case is a force tangent to the side rotating it, right? So if I go like this, I'm applying a force to each side to rotate it. So I'm applying a force this way and this way. Both of those are applying a torque. And the amount of torque applied by those vectors is the force times the radius to the center here. All right? So this rope is applying a torque to this pulley. I gotta pause this here and I'll start this. My camera's about to run out of film.